you had shattered my family. It's like a glass when it shatters, breaks. You try to put it together, but it'll never be the same. There are always going to be scars, always going to be pain. Losing one family member, it's tragic. But losing three, it's devastating. My name is Elir Vitucci. I am from a family of immigrants. We were seven siblings. We grew up for a while in Kosovo. Then we moved back to the U.S. Daddy, pass it to me! We were very close uh, as a family. Well, one for all, all for one. All my brothers were good doers. They always extended a hand to anybody in need. They tried tried helping anybody they could. The expulsion of Kosovar Albanians by the Serbs on an industrial scale has continued unabated. The humanitarian crisis facing the Balkans as thousands of people from Kosovo have left their homes and arrived on the borders of neighboring countries. The world is now witnessing one people destroying another people's very identity. If President Milosevic will not make peace, we will limit his ability to make war. My parents come from Kosovo. They lived their whole life there. Albanian people are very welcoming, warming, you know what I mean? In the late 90s, we kind of knew what was going on behind closed doors with Serbs, because Serbs started killing Albanians way before the war. My mom, my brother, and my sister, they were in Kosovo at the time, and we were trying to get in touch with them, but there was no way of getting in touch. All of a sudden we get word from the um, American Albanian community at the time that there's an army being formed. We sat down with my brothers and my dad, and we decided that we all wanted to go. and. Uh, we were like, somebody's got to stay behind. They went without hesitation. There was nothing stopping them. The last thing I told them, I told them, be safe. I expect you guys to come home. After the war ended, thanks God my brothers were safe. And my brother stuck around for the transition of peace, assisting people that need assistance. After the war ended, there was no signs of where the border begins or ends. And that's where they were captured by the uh, Serbian forces. And from that day on, my brothers were just gone, disappeared. Two years later, they were found executed in a mass grave. It was hell, hell, trying to find out what's, what's going on. I met with Serbian officials and they told us that they'll be fine. There's nothing to worry about. They were just kept giving us the, uh, the uh, cold shoulder that everything's fine. Our investigation has led to us to know that uh, President Milosevic ordered his top lieutenants down his chain of command to see this through. We know exactly who is involved, who had killed them. They were killed because of they were, they were Americans due to the NATO bombing. After 20 years, we're still battling for justice.
because the Serbian government chooses not to prosecute its criminals. Justice needs to be served in this case, not allow the uh, criminals who committed the crime to walk freely. Chairman Engel, members of the committee, thank you for hosting this important hearing and inviting me to testify. On behalf of my family and other victims of war crimes committed during the Kosovo War, I am here to offer the word of simple message. Victims cannot be ignored. They were my brothers, but they were Americans. Every American citizen deserves justice abroad. Every perpetrator that committed a crime against Americans abroad should be brought to justice. If I could talk to my brothers right now, I could tell them that I love them, I miss them. They are always in my prayers, night and day. We had a great life together. I miss them very dearly. I want to make sure that the uh, perpetrators who committed this crime will not go free making it well known to U.S. government, and especially Serbian government, that we ain't going in any way anytime soon. We're here to stay. We're here to stay and seek justice until justice is served.